Hey Tigers, welcome to your digital reteach for measure and graph changes in motion. It's important that you understand how you're going to get credit for this reteach. Use the Cornell Note worksheet from your teacher while you watch this video. Take notes, answer the questions, and write your summary at the end. Show your completed Cornell Note worksheet to your teacher. They will then give you information about your next opportunity to retest. Now with this video, if we get going too fast or if you need more time to look at something, just go ahead and pause it or back it up a little bit to get what you need. All right, the first thing we want to look at and just think about for now is when you do measurements. Now in most motion graphs, you're not usually going to do much measuring. Usually we'll ask you a question and we'll give you all the information you need. But always beware of the units. And what I mean by this is sometimes we might give you information in seconds and then ask you for the answer in minutes. So if we said something happened in 60 seconds, you got to make sure you understand that's just one minute. Now we don't do this often, but when we do, we're just up making sure that you're reading all the information and reading the graph appropriately. Next up, we need just a basic understanding of what is motion. Let's start just with what's not. If something's at rest, obviously it's not in motion but it will be in motion if we change it from being at rest. So if it moves forward or if it is to move backwards, that's all gonna be a change in motion. If it's already moving, it might be speeding up or slowing down, that would also be a change in motion. And we need to understand what that's gonna look like on a graph. That's what this video is gonna help you do. And then really, any combination of that is a change in motion. So the first thing I want to help you guys out and understand is for the setup of this tutorial video, all the motion that I'm going to be doing, I videotaped myself doing in my office. And if you look at this picture, this is kind of the setup of my office. There's numbers on the floor. So this is number one, and then one meter down is two, three meters, four meters, five meters, and it ends at six meters. Now you can't see zero meters, but it is behind me in that picture that's where I'll be walking or moving and we'll try to graph that motion. So when it starts moving, sometimes it's hard to see what's going on, but that's the same setup I use for every video. Now, when we want to graph motion, for now we're going to keep it simple and use a distance versus time graph. On a graph like this, it's one thing to try to memorize what the lines are doing, but then you don't really understand what's happening. So you always want to think about reading the graph. If we give you a graph that doesn't have numbers, that's okay. You can always add in fake numbers to help you understand what's really happening. The big idea I need you to understand right now is that on the x-axis, we have time. So on this one, I used one second, two second, three seconds. So as time goes on and time keeps moving like it always does, my line will always be moving to the right because time keeps going. The question is, what's happening to my distance? How far away am I moving? So I don't always have to start at zero, but if I do start at zero, that's like saying that I'm standing right on top of the motion sensor. I could also start six meters away from the motion sensor. And then as I move, my line's gonna go to the right, but something's gonna have to change to determine my distance depend on what's happening and what I'm doing. And that's what we're going to look at. But for now, just understand the line's always moving to the right. All right, so I'm going to start a video for at rest. So as we start this video, I know there's no time, but now it's like one second, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds. Notice where I'm standing. I'm at three meters away from the motion sensor. 12 seconds, still haven't really gone anywhere. And then I get to about 15 seconds and the video stops. So what's that look like if we are to graph it? So the first thing I gotta remember is I don't have to start at the origin. If you'll notice in that video, I was never, ever, ever at zero meters. I actually started at three meters away. So I'm just gonna put a little dot there to help me know where I'm at. Now that video ended at about 15 seconds later. I know there wasn't a timer, so I'll just give you that number. So about 15 seconds later, I was still three meters away from the motion sensor. So if I make a line to make that a graph, here is the graph that would represent my motion. If you notice, as time went on, I didn't move anywhere. So my line did not go up or down 
It just went to the right as time went on. But all through the video, I was three meters away from the motion sensor. I'll go back. So on this one, let's go ahead and I'll start at zero. And now I'm moving away. I'm at two meters away, three meters away, four meters away, five meters away. And it took me about 13 seconds. All right, so if we graph that, this time you'll notice I did start at zero. So I'm going to put a dot at zero meters and zero seconds. And then like I said, it took me about 13 seconds total. So I'm over here on the 13 seconds. And I went the total distance of six meters. So I'm going to put a dot right there. Then when we make the line, now you can see the line. So this line is different than when I was at rest. Now let's try one where I'm going slow forward. So on this one I start at zero, but I'm moving very slow. It's about five seconds. I'm only at one meter. About 10 seconds, I'm barely up to two. All right, so on that one, it was almost 18 seconds for me to get to three meters. So once again, I started at zero, so I'm gonna put that dot there. 18 seconds later, I had only gone three meters. So if we graph that, there's my line for that one. Now if I put a label on there, that was my slow graph. And that was from the video you just watched. Now let's look at the graphs we just made. So the graph before there at my normal speed is this blue line. If you notice, these have a major difference. Look at the angle of the line. Now it's one thing to try to remember what the angle of the line means, but you're making yourself kind of work too hard. If I add in numbers, what, is this, what does this red line really mean? This red line really means it took me 18 seconds and I moved about three meters away. On the blue line, you'll notice I was walking for 13 seconds and I had gone six meters. So the blue line shows me moving faster than the red line in this case. Let's try one where I try to go a little quicker. So on this one, I'm at one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters, five meters, and I'm at the end. And I got to the end in about five seconds is what it says on my video. All right, so we plot that one. I started at zero. I know I went all the way up to six meters and it took me about five seconds to get there. So five seconds is down here. Six meters is right here. So I draw that dot and there's my graph. Now that was a really quick speed forward. Once again, we got to understand the differences in these. So let's kind of look at the change. So that was the fat, you know, that's fast forward. That was one I just did. Here's the old ones we did just a little bit ago. Look at how much quicker my line went up. Because my line went up quicker, I went a greater distance faster and that is speed. I was much speedier that time than my other videos. All right, now we don't always have to go forward. We can change it up. We can go forwards, backwards, or any combination. So what if we just go backwards? So on this one, I'm gonna start at six meters and start the video. And now I start to walk backwards. Five meters, just past four meters, about 10 seconds into the video, three meters, I'm at two meters, I'm at one meter, and now I'm back to pretty much the starting point. And that took me about 20 seconds to do. So think about where we started. I did not start at zero. So stay away from the origin. I started at six meters. So before the clock started at zero seconds, I was at six meters. So my first dot is up here. And then think about where you ended. As I backed up, eventually I did get back to about zero and it took me a full 20 seconds to do that. So I'm all the way down here. Notice my line graph this time. Now the line graph is still going to the right. It has to go to the right. Otherwise I'd be going backwards in time and that makes no sense. So I'm still going to the right, but the line graph is going down all because 
I'm moving backwards. I'm coming back towards the motion sensor. All right, now that's a lot of information. So for your summary, we're going to do scenarios. In the scenarios, don't worry about making a perfect number graph. Just worry about the line being at a good angle or a good slope. So you're going to draw your own graph for each one of these scenarios. So for scenario one, I want you to draw one graph that has two lines on it. Here's what you need to have for the two lines. One of the lines needs to show someone walking forward. You pick the speed, doesn't matter to us. One other line needs to show someone walking backwards. So you need to graph that. Pause the video while you do that, because it'll take you a little bit of time. And then when you're ready, unpause it for the next scenario. <coughs> for scenario number two, same thing. Don't worry about perfect numbers, don't worry about that. But draw a different graph now that has two lines on that same graph. For one of the lines, make it somebody that is walking forward very slowly. And the second line needs to be someone walking very fast. Pause the video for more time. All right, for your third and final scenario, this is going to be different than any of the graphs you've seen, so you need to use the information you just had. So don't worry once again about perfect numbers. But you need to draw one line, and this line might change a little bit, that's okay. Draw one line that shows a person walking forward. That person then stops for a, a little bit. You decide how long they stop. And then they walk forward some more. Try to draw what that would look like on your own graph for scenario three. And Tigers, that's it. When you're done with that, show that to your teacher and they'll help you out with instructions for the retest.